Hi, Chuck here again. I finally got my HGL Tech F3 V4 Pro working. Um, Banggood.com sent me a new flight controller and I finally got it put back into the frame that I originally had set up. So the original flight controller seemed to be working fine um, when I was setting it up, but I left it on for about an hour one night playing around with it and then the next day came back and went to turn it on and it started smoking so I couldn't really tell what was going on uh, somebody on on my YouTube channel mentioned that if I had my transmitter on that it might burn out so I've been pretty careful this time about leaving the transmitter off but let me go ahead and give a rundown on on the um, the new all-in-one flight controller that I got from Banga.com so I have it installed here um, just like I had before, same components, but um, I'll show you a couple modifications mod excuse me modifications that I did this time around just to um, you know from lessons learned. So one of the problems that I had with the original setup was that I tried to use hot glue to secure the wires that were on the flight controller, but that is just a really messy business. So this time, what I did is I tried to use some Kapton tape. Um, it's just this yellow stuff. It, uh, it's insulating tape. Um, it, it sticks pretty well. It um, can be peeled off. It can be heated up. I use this on my 3D printer for the print bed when I'm printing ABS plastic. So I just went ahead and just cut you know, a square of this uh, Kapton tape and just put it on top of the wires because what I'm trying to do is, is immobilize the wires so that they don't get pulled off of the... Um, solder tabs which are very very minuscule on this fly controller um, let's see one of the other changes that I made was instead of soldering the wires directly onto the board uh, let me show you the original board here um, yeah it's pretty sloppy I had hot glue all over it but oh here we go on this side right here uh, basically they just give you three holes to uh, solder into and that just really um, it works okay but I mean if you look at it now after I put hot glue on it and the wires are just kind of really ugly and everything I just don't like that so um, even though I did use hot glue this time I put I put a socket on here just to just to harden up the the joint because it's just not that perfect the hole spacing on the um, on the fly controller is not quite anything that I have um, on hand but I did happen to have these little sockets that um, you know that I that I can use with um, these plugs. These little um, I don't know how many millimeter spacing these are, but little JST I believe they are. Um, so I had a pack of these, and what I did is um, since they were um, four pins, I went ahead and pulled one pin out, and I spread the three other pins and forced it into the hole. Uh, forced into the three holes so I can get the um, video um, power and ground off of the board and then that just allowed me to use this nice plug here and um, it's gonna just, just gonna make life a lot easier when I have to go ahead and disconnect things so um, yeah, I got these on eBay I'll uh, see if I can find find out what exactly they are but basically, um, I got a pack of these for a few bucks, and uh, I've been using them a lot, and they fit the um, HS1177 cameras just fine. So, so oh, getting, getting some ESC beeping here. Let me go ahead and restart this thing. Okay, so, so I have this plugged in right now, and a um, funny thing, uh, about this setup is that when you have the USB um, connected, it it cuts out the video. So um, you really can't see the video when the USB is connected. I'm not sure exactly how um, it's all set up, but um, but in any case, um, the OSD that's built in straight out of the package is working. Um, this time I was able to um, flash the flight controller to the latest version of Betaflight by holding down the boot button and plugging it in. It worked just fine. Uh, no problems with the 
latest uh, Betaflight configurator. And um, so, so far, um, no problems with the board. Um, I have the video transmitter working, so I, I have been leaving the switch off because I'm afraid of overheating the board, and I do have it on um, 25 uh, milliwatts uh, transmit power right now. So, so in any case, uh, let me just give you a look right now at the screen. Okay, so, yeah, so basically it's the OSD is working, but I think it's coming out in PAL format, and I think that's causing my monitor to not show all the data. So um, I don't think that's going to be a problem with my goggles. So I want to show how to hook up the OSD on the um, F3 V4 Pro board. I think I got that right. And what I wanted to point out is that when they ship you the cables, they actually don't set up the cables correctly to um, to interface with the the OSD. So the OSD port is on on the front of the board. Well, here's the arrow here. So on the front of the board, the port is here, and they give you this cable with uh, with this connector on the end. But what they do is they wire the ground on the sixth pin, and when you when you plug this into your FD FTDI adapter, um, at least my FTDI adapter, it did not uh, provide um, the correct ground signal on this yellow wire. So what I had to do is I had to swap the yellow wire from the sixth position to the fifth position. And once you have that set up, you're able to power up your, your um, OSD. And one important thing is do not plug in your USB cable at the same time. If you plug in your USB cable at the same time, what I believe happens is that the OSD and the USB share the same um, port and the USB will override the OSD port. So make sure you unplug your OSD, um, unplug your USB cable before you plug in your OSD and plug in your OSD separately. So you won't be able to use your configurator at the same time your board is powered up. So now that I have this plugged in, you get these lights flashing and that's a indicator of what's going on. Um, let's see, I guess the pinout of the board is kind of important here. So we have as a ground, um, and so that's the only thing you have to change. So. Once you move the, the ground over to the fifth pin, everything else really lines up. And the colors, don't pay any attention to the colors because even though this is kind of a red color, this is not power. Power is actually on this red here coming in. So power is here. So we have ground and then power. And the rest of them are correct. I, I don't have the pin out in front of me right now, but um, in any case, I'll I'll uh, what I'll do is I'll put a link up to the um, documentation or at least the page that shows the pin out of the connector, and then you'll be able to see exactly what I'm talking about. But everything is correct except for the ground. On the MWOSD configurator, I'm just going to connect to it right here just to show that everything's working. So once I plug this into my Mac, I get uh, my FTDI adapter showing up here as a USB serial and then if I hit the connect button it'll go in and um, connect and so now we're connected to the OSD and everything is great so this is what your default um, looks like. Finally I was able to get a proper maiden flight for the LS210 using the F3 V4 Pro all-in-one board from HGL Tech and I think I'm pretty happy. Uh, finally, I got it all flying and put together. Um, so here it is. Um, this is how it was flown, uh, everything on it. I um, have quite a few extra little things that are going to add some weight on here. Um, let's see. I have some 3D printed um, motor guards. I'll probably take those off, maybe exchange those for some soft mounts uh, using some TPU. Uh, material for the motors 
And let's see, what else? I have a case for my GoPro session. And I guess those are the extras on on here that'll add some weight on here. But uh, let me get my scale out and and do a little weigh in. Okay, and the verdict is all up weight five hundred and ninety seven grams. So I think that's pretty close to what my um, my X two ten was, but. Uh, let me go ahead and strip off some of these components here or some of the extras and and we'll do another weigh in in a bit. A little pad on there. Okay. So, looking at the at the build, I have my capacitor here, this capacitor, and this was supplied as part of the kit, so I just soldered it in the area where the the XT60 connector was supposed to go, but I didn't want to put the XT60 connector here because of a uh, possibility of getting damaged in a crash if I if I um, had the battery eject and uh, pull off um, or break the board. So what I decided to do was just run the cable to the back and put it into the the you know where where the connector is supposed to go. So we have you have this little recess that you can pop your cable into. Um, let's see, what else? Oh, the Racer Star ESC, I rotated uh, 90 degrees uh, because had I kept it in the um, stock orientation, the ESC wires would have been coming out of the side of the, of the frame. And so by rotating it, I was able to have the wires flow a little bit better um, along the arms and, uh, and clean up. Uh, the side of the the craft from the all-in-one board i did have to run some jumpers to the esc so so i have um, a couple um, wires here that run underneath that connect into the esc there but if you look into the side of the board it's pretty clean i have my beeper here um, through the back here my pigtail mounted on the back here and run the cable alongside the power and if you look at the stack here we have a three level stack um, the first level with the ESC I have soft mounted um, I talked about this um, I think in one of my other videos um, in any case soft mounted um, ESC and on top of the ESC I have the flight controller board and then on top of the flight controller board I have a 3D printed um, little rack here for my FR Sky uh, D4R receiver. So another 3D printed part here. I'll put the Thingiverse um, location in the description. On the front of it, I'm using another 3D printed part for the camera mount. Um, works pretty well. I guess there's not much else to say about it. Um, HS1177 camera. And that's pretty much it. So a fun little quadcopter. And hopefully I'll get out and do some more tuning and uh, really enjoy this. But uh, let's, get, uh, let's get a dry weight on this before I go. And we are at 335 grams dry. So not too bad. Let me pull out my X210 and see what that looks like. I recently had a crash on my X210 and um, bent one of the motor shafts. And so, so it's, it's out of commission right now. But let me see. Here's the top plate for it. And I think we're missing a few things. I'm missing like four prop nuts and a couple uh, motor screws. So a dry weight on the X210. Oh, this has a battery strap on it too. So I guess it's not exactly apples to apple, but uh, 336 grams for my X210. And 335 for the LS210. So pretty comparable. 
Um, I think the performance is going to be about the same, but what I can say is that so far what I've noticed is that the difference in the flight characteristics of the uh, the LS210, which is a QAV210 clone versus uh, a Pure X type of a, of a quadcopter, is that the LS210 does seem to be a lot more stable on roll. And it's just a lot, um, it's just more stable on the roll axis. And I think that probably owes to the, the spacing of the, the arms. It certainly is wider than it is long. So um, it's taken a little while to get used to this. And I've only put two batteries through it. Well, I know that's going to be a strange cutaway there, but thank you very much for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed it. And if you liked it, please give me the thumbs up. Subscribe if you will, please. And hope to see you again here some other time. Thanks and have a great day.